Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing all of my Sephora holiday savings event recommendations. This is always one of my favorite shopping events of the year and it kicks off on Friday. For my fellow Rouge members, you can save 20% off using the code savings at checkout. I will make sure all of those important dates and details are listed down below in the description box. And I limited my selection to just a few items per category. I didn't want this video to become too overwhelming, but these are all of my favorite items. Tried and true, I incorporated as many new items as possible, but I don't think you will see a ton of surprises here because I really think this is the best time to go for those restock items. The products that you are constantly repurchasing throughout the year at Sephora, take a look at your inventory, see what you might need in the near future, and take advantage of the savings. Of course, once you get all of your restocks out of the way, it is a great time to look at investment pieces if there are any really expensive luxury items that you've been holding out for great time to get your discount and then of course holiday gifts. Let's talk about fragrance real quick because I want to make sure all of you save as much money as possible. Once again, Sephora is holding their fragrance for all event on December 13th. The event will be December 13th through the 24th. I believe it's a one-time use coupon, but it's 20% off all full-size fragrances. So if you are not a Rouge member and you can wait, then it's a better deal to go ahead and take advantage of the fragrance for all event in December. Get your 20% off versus the 10 or the 15. And if anyone's curious, my personal game plan for the holiday savings event this year is to kind of take it easy. I don't think you'll see any major haul in my near future. A lot of you know I spent the majority of this year on either a low buy or a no buy. So a lot of the things in my cart are items that launched earlier this year. And at the time I couldn't really justify the purchase, but I've been waiting to review them and try them for myself. So I will make an initial purchase, I'm sure as soon as I can shop on Friday. And then I am planning to go in store and maybe if they'll let me film a little shopping vlog for you. So be on the lookout for that very soon. The first category is kind of a miscellaneous skincare prep. The Pharmacy Green Clean Makeup Removing Melting Balm. This is amazing. I cannot tell you how many of these jars I have in my empties bin. I can't wait to count my empties at the end of the year, but I go through this all the time. I believe there is a gift set again this year. This is from the gift set I picked up last year. This is... I believe a lemon flavor. Yes, lemon mint. It's just a great makeup remover. I always double cleanse every night, which is why I'm constantly going through my makeup melting bombs. This is the best one that's available at Sephora, bar none. I've tried probably all of them. And this one is so fast and easy. It instantly melts the makeup. It's so gentle. And when you rinse, it's gone. No greasy residue left on the skin. So this is a must have for me and I think I already have maybe three. So I won't need to pick up any backups this time around, but it's one of my all time favorite products at Sephora. Definitely one of my most restocked items that I purchase constantly. I always have my eye out for this. Another skincare must have for me, Dr. Dennis Gross, the Extra Strength Daily Peels. Extra Strength, Universal, Gentle, all of them. Whichever is the best strength for you, it's a great time to pick these up because they are pretty expensive, but they're amazing. This is such a game changer for your skin. And anytime I'm having some sort of hormonal breakout or maybe my skin is just freaking out and I'm getting little breakouts and blemishes, this is what helps me hit the reset button and it just kind of cleans, gets rid of all of the clogged pores, all of the dirt and debris on the top layer of the skin. Not only are they great for blemish prone skin, but fine lines, hyperpigmentation. So I've been using these on my neck and chest as well. They're amazing. I think I probably have one backup box. So again, I won't need to restock these this time around, but it's one of those items. I know I'm going to purchase in the future, so I wanna make sure I get my discount. Another great Dr. Dennis Gross product is the Dewy Deep Cream with vitamin C and lactic acid. This is relatively new. I think by now I've probably had it maybe a little over a month, but I really like this moisturizer. I used this today, I'm kind of going through a couple different moisturizers at the moment. I tell myself I'm skin cycling, but it's probably actually bad for my skin. So I'm almost done with my Chanel number no. one. I also have the Amore Pacific, which unfortunately is not carried at Sephora. Amore Pacific is at Sephora, but the particular item that I love so much is not there, so I'm not even gonna mention it. But this would be the third moisturizer that I also use. It's very thick and rich, which I didn't think I would love, but I actually do really love it. I tend to get oily sometimes still in my T-zone. I wouldn't say I have oily skin, 
but this is amazing. It's great beneath makeup and especially if you have dry skin, this just leaves you feeling so quenched and really soft and supple and I don't want to say it leaves like a, a greasy finish, but you definitely feel plump. And would it be a Sephora recommendations video if I did not discuss the Super Goop Glow screen? I think not. I believe I've talked about this in probably all of my recommendations videos. It's my one skincare regret in life that I didn't wear sunscreen enough growing up as a teenager, as a young adult. I just didn't really take it seriously. If they made sunscreens like this when I needed them when I was younger, I probably would not have nearly the sun damage that I have on my chest. I wouldn't have the dark spots, the wrinkles. It's such an essential step of your daily skincare routine and it leaves a beautiful glow to the skin. It just leaves your skin looking so much better that I almost don't even really think of it as a sunscreen product. And this is the shade Sunrise, but they added a golden hour, a deeper tone. So that is in my shopping cart. I'm planning to pick that up this time around during the savings event. Moving right along to primers, foundations, and concealers, I have three primers here to talk about and they are all illuminating primers. But the great thing about them is that they're not heavy, they're not greasy, so they're for all skin types. The Guerlain Meteorite has been one of my favorites for a really long time and this is a cult favorite. It's a um, secret product of a lot of makeup artists, so it's been around for a long time and it's incredibly popular. I either picked this up during the holiday savings event last year or maybe the spring savings event. I don't remember, but I know I wanted to wait to take advantage of the savings because it is on the pricier side. So I would say this would be more of a splurge item, but it's well worth picking up, especially if you have savings. This Iconic London Radiance Booster, I love this product. I just discovered this earlier this year. I believe this was gifted to me by Iconic London. It's the shade Champagne Glow. It's amazing and it's a little less expensive than the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And I would say it's maybe a little bit better. I just love the texture, the consistency. It leaves a beautiful sheen on the skin. The finish is a little bit grippy, so I think it works perfect underneath foundation. And I love the squeezy tube. Like this is a superior package in my opinion. So I personally prefer the Iconic London to the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And the third primer is this V Lighter from Valentino. This is one of my favorite Valentino products. I purchased this myself last year when it first launched and I have the shade Rosa, which is a really pretty kind of pearly pink. Kind of gives that ethereal, very bridal glow to the skin. They also have a bronze shade, which looks gorgeous. What I love about this, it's illuminating and it has skincare ingredients and it works perfectly beneath makeup to kind of grip your foundation. You can also mix this in and you can layer on top. So it's incredibly comparable to the Chanel Le Beige highlighting fluid. If you're familiar, I would say this is maybe even a smidge better because it has all of the yummy skincare ingredients. This is definitely my new favorite foundation launch of the year. It immediately went to the top drawer. It's what I'm wearing on my face today and it's what I'm wearing most days that I film now. It's the new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. It is so perfecting. It is so light and yet it just completely evens out your skin tone without looking like heavy foundation. And you really only need to use a teeny tiny bit. I would say half a pump can cover the entire face. I don't know how, it just kind of glides on like paint and it's like, it's it's never ending. It replaced my Guerlain L'Essential High Perfection, which I thought I would never be able to replace or find something I liked as much. If you haven't had a chance to try this yet, I would say coverage and longevity wise, it would be pretty similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless. But texture wise and the finish, kind of the dry down, how it applies on the skin, it's so much silkier, it doesn't dry down quickly, it doesn't get sticky, and I think it looks better longer. It's a little less high maintenance. An old favorite that I would say is one of my most restocked products at Sephora, the Armani Beauty Luminous Silk. This is shade 5.5, and I'm between two shades. I recently went through my little travel size. So I have the full size bottle, I have the little mini size, and I generally go between two shades. So I will most likely, I need to double check what I have and what I need, but I will most likely end up restocking the Luminous Silk because I like to take this with me whenever we travel for the holidays. The little mini Luminous Silk bottle is just so convenient. It's so much better than traveling with a full size foundation. So I love this, looks beautiful on the skin. And I like applying this foundation with the 
Sephora Pro Foundation 57. Give me one second. This brush, okay, 56, excuse me, I was off by one digit. Okay, so this is the Sephora Pro Foundation 56 brush, match made in heaven right here. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes. I believe I have two that I kind of go between, just stipples on the product so that it just kind of pushes it into the skin and it ends up looking even more flawless and natural, if that's even possible. So the Sephora Pro brushes are all 30% off during the entire holiday savings event for all tiers. So don't sleep on Sephora Pro brushes. I will make sure I include a little section of my favorites. Every time I do my makeup, I grab these over my more expensive brushes. My third choice is the Splurge Worthy Foundation. This is the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. It's so portable, it looks beautiful on the skin. I've also traveled with this actually, and depending on the climate, because I think you do have to watch your skin prep, this works great as well. So I love this foundation. It looks gorgeous, gives you plenty of coverage. It's customizable, great for touch-ups. So it kind of checks a lot of boxes and I think it kind of suits a few purposes that a traditional liquid or cream foundation doesn't. And it's very expensive. In Tom Ford foundations, I wear shade six natural. So this would also be a great recommendation. If you've had your eye on it, you definitely wanna take advantage of the 20% or the 15 or the 10. I have three concealers that I recommend. These are two new launches this year. I have the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Light and the new Charlotte Tilbury. Both of these concealers are incredible and it really is just going to depend on your personal preference coverage wise. I would say the Too Faced, they both contain skincare, but the Too Faced is a little bit lighter. So this is more natural, no makeup, makeup days. I mean, you can build it up a little bit, but it just blends so beautifully that you're not going to get full coverage out of this concealer. But on days that I'm not wearing any foundation, I can apply this concealer, tap it out with my fingers, and it doesn't look funny. So I really love this for more natural makeup. And then the new Charlotte Tilbury blew me away. I think at the moment, this is probably my favorite new concealer because the coverage, the finish, how it lasts. Everything about it is perfection in my eyes. I think this is a beautiful full coverage concealer. I have shade 4 Fair in the Charlotte Tilbury and shade Sugar in the Too Faced. The Charlotte Tilbury is going to be better for full glam, full makeup. You could probably just apply less product if you wanted it to be more natural, but on days like today, this is the concealer that I'm wearing. I think it just looks so smooth and flawless. And now this is in the top drawer. In fact, both of these are in the top drawer, along with my old time favorite, which is the Pat McGrath Labs. This is the, the Skin Fetish Sublime. I have the shade L1. I also have shade L3. I really love both of these. This is, again, another full coverage concealer, but it's so brightening, it's so beautiful. I don't have problems with creasing with any of these concealers. I'm almost done with this tube and this was a restock. So I've gone through this concealer several times and it's one of those products that I will continually restock because it just looks beautiful. It's a tried and true favorite. Moving on to setting powders, I have one of my new favorites from this year. It's from Westman Atelier, and it's safe to say that all Westman Atelier products would be great purchases during the savings event because they're incredibly expensive. They're very luxurious. I would say everything I've tried is well worth the money. They're very natural. The packaging is very beautiful, but it's expensive. So this powder, this little compact, which I believe is $75, it's called the Vital Pressed Skincare Powder. I have a shade Pink Bubble. It's stunning. I used this today to set the Charlotte Tilbury Concealer, and it just does everything you need it to. It's so silky, so finely milled. It kind of disappears into the skin. So it's not going to add coverage, but it's definitely going to help with shine. But the Pink Bubble in particular is very brightening underneath the eye, not overly pink, but that's okay. It still does everything I need it to. So it's a beautiful powder. I mean, look at this gold compact. And it feels heavy, feels like a weapon. You could just chuck this at somebody if you needed to. I also really like the Armani Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder. This is another pressed powder. I have the shade three in this powder. Now this is more of a pressed finishing powder. It's very slightly more luminous. It's more of I don't know if I would call it maybe a soft focus glow. It's a little bit more of a silky finish. So if you have more mature skin or dry skin, this might be a better option for you, but wow, is it stunning. It just 
leaves your skin looking naturally perfect. I would say if you have oily skin, I would maybe stay away from this. It, it maybe gives a little bit too much glow, but I think it's beautiful. I love to just dust this on as a touch up or even as kind of a final step whenever I'm done with my makeup. And my favorite loose powder that's available at Sephora is the Huda Beauty. This is banana bread. I also purchased cherry blossom recently. I believe it's still out of stock, but the powder itself, besides the fragrance, which I know bothers a lot of people, the powder is amazing. I would say this is right up there with my Chanel loose powder, which is generally what I use. They're really interchangeable. They set the makeup, they don't add coverage, but they leave the skin looking pretty matte, which is what I want. As long as you're not sensitive to fragrance, and I actually like the scent, it's very sweet, almost cinnamon sugar. As long as that doesn't bother you, this is the most beautiful powder beneath the eyes. Next, I have a few cheek products here. The first is the Gucci blush. Now, I have been really surprised by the negative feedback I've seen on social media regarding this blush. It has not been negative talking about the actual product, and I think that's what I don't really understand. The whole aesthetic is very Pinterest, very photogenic. The products look beautiful just sitting on a desktop or sitting on your vanity, but the blush is beautiful and nobody disagrees with me there. I think the shades they came out with are stunning and it's such a silky, beautiful formula. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's so soft and silky that it almost feels creamy, kind of like the bronzer. The next two products I have here are also new launches this year. I have the Hourglass palette. This is the Lighting Edit Unlocked Lustrous. I don't know if that's maybe the shade combination inside. I customized my palette on the Hourglass website, so I have the Tiger artwork and this particular shade combination, which I really love. The bronzer I have on today, the blush I'm wearing, all of these powders inside look so beautiful. I mean, the Hourglass powders are lovely. It's a kind of baked, soft, ethereal, everything has a little glow to it. it kind of gives you that soft focus blur. The finishing powders I think are really nice to kind of dust on maybe as a highlighter or when you're completely done with your makeup. I don't love any of the setting powders. I prefer something more matte, like the Westman Atelier or the Huda Beauty, the Armani Luminous Silk even is more matte than these. But for everything else, for color, blush, bronzer, highlight, these powders are so pretty. This is my current favorite Hourglass palette. So I'm really happy I picked this up again this year. And then I also picked up both of these blush palettes from Charlotte Tilbury, another incredible launch from Charlotte. This is the Fair to Medium and this is the Medium to Deep palette. I can make both of them work. The deep blushes in each palette, this one is looks a bit more like a fuchsia pink. This one almost looks red they go on very sheer. So I would say both of these palettes are actually best suited for more of a medium skin tone. They kind of meet in the center of the spectrum. They're stunning. They look so beautiful on the face. I love my makeup whenever I use these and the exterior packaging even. This pink pearlescent, oh, it's so pretty. It's kind of a pink mother of pearl. These are some of my favorite palettes of the year. I did hear a lot of people say that they weren't really interested, they were gonna skip it. So I think for the holiday savings event, this would be one of those splurgy items that maybe you wouldn't get it if it wasn't on sale, but if you have 20% off, 15% off, I also think these palettes would make a beautiful gift for a beauty lover in your life. One of my favorite Charlotte Tilbury products. I don't have any other individual bronzers to mention, but I do have two other highlighters. They're both creams, well, liquid and a cream. Westman Atelier, you know I had to include it on the list. I think last year I picked up the Peau de Peche, but the Peau de Rose is an all-time favorite. It's what I have on my cheeks today, but most days. If And even if it's not listed in the description box, it was definitely this. Because I keep it in the top drawer, you can see I hit pan. And even though I hit pan, I think it's gonna take me a really long time to finish this. I will most likely have to restock maybe during the spring savings event next year. It's expensive, but it's so pretty on the skin. And I really feel like when you press it into the face and then even go on top very lightly with your powder brush, it doesn't look like highlighter on your cheek. It doesn't accentuate any texture. It just looks like a natural 
glow. And then the Iconic London Liquid Illuminators. These are so pretty and they are blinding. This is the new shade that I picked up. It's, well, new to me, the shade Blush. But then what sold me on the product, what made me fall in love, is the original. This is so bright and blinding. A teeny tiny bit is all you need. But I like to mix this into my body lotion. I'll mix this into my Sol de Janeiro and I'll apply it just like body cream. It doesn't transfer or get all over your clothing, but it leaves your skin looking just so flawless and angelic, like heaven sent. That's it for complexion. So now we're moving on to eyes, lips, and other makeup essentials. I don't have a ton of eyeshadows here to talk about or eyeshadow products because I'm so happy with my current collection. I could talk about the same palettes over and over, but there are two palettes that come to mind as being favorite palettes of 2022. The first was an absolute surprise. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Pillow Talk of Dreams palette, Pillow Talk Dreams luxury palette. It's so beautiful. I wear this constantly. I think what I love about this is that it's basically the core shades that I've used up from the larger Pillow Talk palette. This is kind of the perfect condensed version. It's all you need. It's so flattering. I love these colors. This goes in the crease. This adds a little depth and you can do either one of those on the lid. I'm always wearing this. This is has become like my go-to eyeshadow palette. I keep it in the top drawer and it's just perfection. The second eyeshadow palette is a doozy. This is one of the Mothership palettes from Pat McGrath Labs. It's the only Mothership palette launch of 2022. This is such a beautiful eyeshadow palette. I have this on my eyes today and I always have so much fun playing around with these colors. But I think it has a lot of versatility whereas some of the other palettes I just don't really grab for them unless I know it's a special occasion. I'm sitting down, I have plenty of time, all the time in the world to do my makeup and then I will go in my drawer and I'll pull out one of the other palettes. But this one, I've been getting so much use out of and I think these colors are very pretty. There's still a lot of sparkle. It still has all of the drama and all of the glamour of a Pat McGrath Labs Mothership palette. Don't get me wrong, it's not boring or neutral. However, I just think these shades are so wearable. The other eye products I have here to talk about are really makeup essentials, they're staples. These are great restock products, things that I'm constantly going to repurchase, repurchase. If I run out, I need a, another one. I need a backup. So first, I'm going to talk about eyeliner. I've been loving this Huda Beauty eyeliner. This is the Life Liner Quick and Easy in the shade Very Brown. What I like so much about it is that the little brush, is it a sponge tip or a brush? It's a brush. It is so fine. I've never seen any other eyeliner with a brush quite so fine tipped. So you can get so precise, but it also doesn't tickle at all, which is nice. So whenever I'm doing the inner corner of the eye, you can just, I can barely even feel it touching my eye, but you can be super, super precise with this. So I love this brown eyeliner. I know I had mentioned probably a long time ago now that I was in the market for a brown eyeliner and I needed your help. Well, this is the one that I've settled on. It's the best that I've tried. And then for brows, I always do a pretty good job stocking up on my brow pencils. I think last year during the holidays, I picked up the Benefit set. I will have to look at my inventory, but I think I'm pretty much good to go with brow pencils. But this is the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit. I love it. This one is almost dead. I probably have maybe well, maybe two uses left, but I already have backup pencils because I stock up whenever they're on sale and you can get a discount on top of a discount depending on what the set is. So it come, ends up coming out to be a really good price. This is my favorite brow pencil. I've tried others. I always go back to this one. And then the Anastasia Brow Freeze, I might end up purchasing a backup. This is the second container I've gone through. It lasts about a year, but I know from my experience with the first one that you can kind of flatten the product that is up on the sides, flatten it back down, and you'll end up getting several more months out of it. So I may get a backup or I may decide to wait until the spring savings event, but I will always use this every single time I do my makeup. So why not save some money? And then mascara, this is a new favorite. This is from Makeup Forever. It's their Professional Mascara. There are two sides, step one and step two. 
I love this for separation volume. It is incredibly dramatic. It's one of the best mascaras I've ever tried. I didn't think I was going to like this because it looks sort of gimmicky, like why do you need two brushes? But the brushes are totally different on both sides that it actually works perfectly. So I do really love this mascara. I also really like the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes from Charlotte Tilbury and then the Gucci mascara which I've temporarily misplaced. I think it's in a drawer somewhere. I use it basically every day. I'm almost done with the Gucci. And then I wanna make sure I go through this. I have several open mascaras, so I'm gonna hold out for now. I think I have plenty of mascaras, but if I had to make a recommendation, I would say those three are the top available at Sephora. For lips, I have a couple products here to recommend. The first is this lipstick from Makeup by Mario. It's the shade Erin. I am biased, but it's a really beautiful, kind of cool mauve nude. And Mario came out with lip kits, which I want to say they're 20 bucks for the kit and it comes with the lipstick and the lip liner. I want to say there are three different shades. One of them contains Erin. So I would recommend picking up the Erin kit, of course, but no, any of the lip kits I think are a great deal. I do really like this lipstick, but it is matte. So I have to add something glossy on top. This Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump in the shade White Peach. It went viral on TikTok. I picked it up much later. I was behind the trend, but I understand why people kind of went crazy for it. It's just a beautiful color. It kind of feels a little minty and plumping on the lips. It's nice and glossy and it's just easy and it's mess free. It's a really great product. And then this is the lip gloss that I have on today and I have been asked so many questions about it. Every time I wear this, somebody asks me, what is on your lips? Sometimes it's because I forget to link it, but other times it's in the description box, but I still get questions about it. It's this Champagne Diamonds lip gloss from Charlotte Tilbury. It's so pretty. It's nude and it's sparkly, but it doesn't feel chunky. Like it feels very smooth on the lips. I will finish this this week. I only have a teeny tiny little bit left. It's so pretty. That's all I have for skincare and makeup. I know it's a lot of products already and I still have more to talk about. If there's anything else that I left out that I would recommend, I will leave it down below in the description box for you, but I do have a couple hair products to mention. I've talked about my hair care routine quite extensively in the past, but I will make sure all of these products are linked down below. IGK is one of my favorite hair care brands, the Good Behavior 4-in-1 Prep Spray. I use this every time I style my hair. It has heat protection, it's a leave-in conditioner, kind of does everything you need it to do. Olaplex course. I'm going to link all of my favorite Olaplex products down below. The Olaplex number no. three hair perfector has saved my hair. It just really changes the way your hair feels. It makes everything really soft, smooth, manageable. So I don't like to do this every time I wash my hair now, but I'll do it every other time. And on the days that I'm not doing the hair perfector, I will do an oil treatment and I will link my favorite JVN hair oil down below. I finished the bottle, I've been using something else instead, but I don't like it as much as the JVN. It's in the empties bin, I might fish it out, but I will link it down below. It's an incredible scalp oil. Hair masks. I am the hair mask connoisseur of Sephora. I'm telling you, I've tried them all. There are some that are really good, there are some that are mediocre, but I'm gonna list all of my favorites down below. The Money Mask from Color Wow amazing definitely top of the list this is what i'm currently using it's the moroccan oil intense hydrating mask i think i got this tube from the holiday set they had last year i'm not sure what sets they have off the top of my head but if i can find a good set i will link that instead of the individual but i've gone through an entire tub of the moroccan oil hydrating hair mask in the past and it's always been one of my favorites this is another one of those products that I talk about every time the savings event comes around because it's expensive. This brush, I believe is $100. It's a boar's hair brush from Christoph Robin. It's my favorite round brush. It's so gentle on the hair and because it's made of wood and not metal, it's not going to conduct heat. So it's not going to accidentally burn your hair or make things a lot hotter than they should be whenever you're doing your blow dry. It's amazing. I have the round brush. I also have the flat brush. And when you brush your hair using the boar's hair bristles, what it does is it helps bring the natural hair oils 
down the shaft of the hair. So it makes your hair really soft, silky, smooth. I know there are a lot of great brushes out there, but I swear by this hairbrush and it's such great quality. I expect that this will last my entire lifetime. I will never have to make another purchase of this brush, but it's one that I definitely recommend. This right here is my number one favorite hot tool at the moment, and it's relatively new, so I feel sort of bad saying that, like I'm cheating on all of my other hot tools. I really like the Beach Waver. I really like the T3 wand. I generally use T3 products whenever I'm using a hot tool, but this one and a quarter curling iron is amazing. This is what I've been using to give myself some curl, and this hairstyle will last several days and I love the way the curls kind of drop over time. So even on day three or day four, the hair still has a very soft wave to it. It's so pretty. The curls actually last and it really does give me that same beachy wave look that I get whenever I leave the hair salon. I have a few bath and body recommendations. The first is the Chanel Chanso Tendre scented bath tablets. I love these bath tablets. This I think would make an, a great gift. It's a splurge item. Is it essential? No, absolutely not. But if you were planning to maybe treat yourself or treat somebody you love with something nice for the holidays, I love them. They are so completely unnecessary. They're luxurious. They smell amazing and it really does scent the bathtub. So it's more of a Chanel experience. I love all of the Sol de Janeiro products, but if I had to choose a favorite body lotion, I think right now it would be the Beja Flor Elastic Cream. I really love all of them. The Bonzia Cream would maybe be a second favorite. Of course, you can't go wrong with the original Boom Boom Cream, but this has a really delicious, slightly sweet floral scent. I was gonna say flavor and it's just intoxicating. It really smells addicting and it leaves the skin feeling really soft and hydrated. Oh, it's so nice. It's a little bit like Burberry Her, but maybe a tad fruity. Oh, it's so pretty. And the scent is really long lasting. It doesn't just disappear on the skin. So this is a great cream for layering your fragrance on top. And if you like to sunless tan like I do, I recommend the Isle of Paradise Self Tanning Butter. It has a really pretty golden sheen to it. So this is great during the day. It's going to help hydrate the skin, but it also gives you a little bit of color over time. Also great in the evenings when you're just between tans but it does leave your skin looking absolutely beautiful. So you can use this day or evening and it will just give you a hint of color. So you need to make sure you wash your hands, but I love this. I've restocked this several times. I think this is probably my third bottle. And that completes my extensive, but hopefully not too overwhelming list of recommendations for the Sephora holiday savings event this year. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.